Hey guys, I'm Neil and welcome to my channel, Neon Black Reviews. If you're new here, I'm just a guy that likes to talk about horror movies and heavy metal music. I upload a new album review every Monday and new horror movie reviews every Wednesday and Friday. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Just click that subscribe button down there. And if you uh, click the bell next to it, you'll never miss a review because YouTube will notify you every time I upload a new video. Also, if you would, please click that like. Uh, that helps this video out with YouTube's algorithm. And of course, I appreciate your support. So if you've watched my last couple of videos, you know um, I'm starting a, a soft reboot of the channel. Uh, one of the things I'm doing is going back and uh, revisiting some of the films that I've watched before and putting up new reviews for those films. So that's what I'm going to be doing here tonight. Uh, I've had a series ongoing on the channel for quite some time now where I'm watching and reviewing some of the more uh, shocking and disturbing uh, extreme films in horror. And one of the... Uh, first couple of videos that I put up uh, in this series was for the first film in the Japanese guinea pig series. I'd never uh, seen any of those films before. Uh, of course, I'd heard of them, but just never got around to watching any of them. Uh, so I watched the first one uh, right at the beginning of uh, this series here on the channel. So I'm going to talk about uh, that one again here tonight. Uh, again, this is the, uh, the Japanese guinea pig series. Uh, there's another series called American Guinea Pig, which I've done a couple of films for that one too. Um, which I'll probably get around to, to re-watching those and going through that series as well. Um, for the uh, Japanese series, I think I made it through the first three films and then just uh, never came back to it. Uh, just got, you know, so many other things that I wanted to watch. Uh, but I'm going to make a commitment to go ahead and get through all of these films for you. Um, I believe there are six official entries. Uh, and I also saw that there is a, an unofficial seventh installment too. So I'll uh, go ahead and throw that one in as well. Um, they're all pretty short um, from what I remember. I know the first three are only about 40 minutes apiece, uh, so they're uh, pretty easy to get through. Uh, so I should be able to do them pretty quickly. Um, I'll probably uh, release these videos on my off days. Uh, they won't be an official, you know, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday release. Uh, that way it doesn't drag out for two months uh, to get through this series. Uh, but anyway, let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, again, this is the first film in the Japanese guinea pig series. It's called Devil's Experiment. Uh, came out back in 1985, and it's presented as kind of a fake documentary, a uh, found footage uh, style film, although it doesn't really look found footage, uh, at least most of the time. There's no handheld camera, shaky cam kind of thing. It's always a still camera from different angles, so I mean, it's cut and edited like a standard film. Uh, but when it first starts out, there is uh, text on the screen uh, in Japanese, so there's uh, subtitles for everything. Um, that uh, basically says that this was a, a tape uh, that was sent in uh, to uh, this guy, uh, who I presume is the director, writer of the film. Uh, let's see, I've got his name written down here. Uh, Satoru Agura, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Uh, but anyway, he claims this uh, tape was sent to him. And then at the end, he kind of wraps it up again with more text on the screen saying that the, the people involved in this film are now being investigated um, and they're trying to find out who they are. Uh, but anyway, the, the concept of the film, uh, like the title implies, this is an experiment uh, supposedly to test the, the boundaries of uh, someone's pain endurance. So it's basically a torture film. Uh, it's presented in 10 separate parts. So it's uh, individual torture sessions where they do a specific thing uh, to this young girl that they have gotten from somewhere that is basically uh, strapped into a chair in this dark room. And there are uh, three perpetrators that carry out these tortures. Uh, again, I think there's an even 10 segments. And each one of them focuses on a different thing. There's hitting, there's kicking. Uh, there's one scene where they throw um, like raw meat and animal guts on her. Uh, just all kinds of, you know, again, just crazy stuff. Um, there's another scene where they uh, pull out a lock of her hair with a pair of pliers and... Uh, and pull off a fingernail. Uh, so it's all pretty, I guess, what you would call standard stuff in the world of torture. Uh, there's nothing here that really stood out to me um, as being, you know, like a unique or original thing to do to a person. 
Uh, it's all pretty standard, I think. Well, there was one that I thought was kind of unique. I, um, I don't know that I'd ever really seen it before. Um, they put uh, a pair of headphones on her, and they strap them on so that she can't shake them off. And uh, they subject her to uh, what sounds like um, the noises that like running machinery would make. So it's a very mechanical grating noise. And they play it at really high volume for like 20 hours. Because again, this is like a documentary. So there's little uh, things that appear on the screen that just kind of tell you what's going on. Like in the hitting session, there's like a, a counter that shows up every so often that shows how many times they've hit her. Well, this one, there's a, a like a time lapse, you know, an hour, five hours, whatever. 20 hours is where it stops. So they basically just uh, make her listen to this really, really loud grating noise for almost a full day. Uh, so, yeah, I think that would be a, a pretty brutal thing to have to go through when you think about it. I mean, of all the things uh, that, you know, are, um, you know, Physical torture is what you normally think of, but this would be more of a, you know, a psychological thing. Of course, I, I, for that long, it could very well become a physical pain. Uh, so that's probably one of the more original things in this film. Um, but as far as the film itself, it's pretty low quality. It's very grainy. Um, it's not in high definition uh, or anything like that. Or at least the version of it I saw is. I don't know if anybody's bothered to make a high-res uh, transfer of this film, but uh, there may be something like that out there. Um, I don't own this one on DVD or anything. Just watched it streaming on the internet. Um, but uh, Which, if that's what you want to do, you can just Google it and probably find it just like I did. Um, but if you find the same site that I did, be very careful. Got to be real careful what you click on on that site. But uh, the films are there. Uh, but anyway, yeah, as far as like the quality of the film, again, um, the description of it that I've read online does say that it is, you know, found footage, but it, it doesn't come across as that. It does, you know, have a still camera. Uh, you get, you know, like I said, the standard cuts and editing um, that you would get in a normal film. Uh, but it does have a very short runtime. It's, you know, basically 40 minutes, uh, give or take. Uh, so you can get through it pretty quickly. Uh, and there's nothing in it, really, um, that's, like, overly gory or graphic. Um, like I said, you know, she gets one of her fingernails ripped out. But, I mean, I mean, how many movies have you seen where that happens, right? Um, probably uh, the goriest scene is the final scene where they uh, take this very thin piece of sharp metal and uh, they drive it through the side of her eye socket and out of her eyeball. And it's a pretty... Uh, it lasts for a couple of minutes. I mean, they hold the eye open, and you can see the blood well up in it, and the thing, you know, the piece of the metal just comes popping out. Uh, so yeah, you know, they dwell on it for a while. You get a really good look at it, and it's probably the best practical effect in the film, um, besides the oil burning scene, uh, which is the only other real scene of note to me. Um, I think uh, because yeah, they take this uh, pot of um, burning oil. Um, and pour it over her arm, and you know, it starts out, and you start to see the flesh burn, and it just gets worse and worse. Uh, so yeah, that's a, a pretty nasty scene, really. Obviously, it would be something extremely painful to go through, but as far as the rest of the stuff in this film, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's no big deal, really. Um, and especially at the beginning, the, the, the hitting and the kicking come first, and, uh, you know, the, 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 the times that they actually do make contact, I mean, it's an open-fisted, uh, open-handed slap. It doesn't look like it's very hard, um, you know, probably because they didn't really want to hit the girl in real life because, you know, obviously all of this is fake. Uh, but it does come across like that. It doesn't come really, you know, it's not very realistic. And then the kicking scene is more of them picking her up and throwing her back down than it is, you know, them actually kicking her. Uh, so it's not very realistic. Uh, the other thing that's not very realistic is her reactions to anything. She doesn't really react the way that you think somebody would if they were going through these tortures that were, you know, if they were real, all of them would pretty much be extremely painful. So you would expect, you know, um, a little bit more reaction out of somebody. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's really just not there. Uh, she does react pretty um, realistically, I think, to the sound torture. Um, and then the, the only other time that she really has like a, you know, a convincing reaction, oddly enough, is the scene where they're throwing raw meat on her, <laughs> which uh, I don't even know if that qualifies as torture. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't want somebody to do that to me, but I mean, she's like, 
uh, asleep or unconscious through most of it. And then towards the end of it, she wakes up and she freaks out. I mean, she really does. And I was just like, wow. I mean, you know, you had almost no reaction to, you know, having one of your fingernails ripped out. Uh, having boiling oil poured pour on your arm, but yeah, the raw meat is where you draw the line. I mean, in that sense, to me, it was actually kind of comical. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall, this is really not uh, what I would consider uh, shocking. Um, everything that's in it is probably something you've seen in a standard horror film. Uh, the only difference here is you get to look at it longer. Because, uh, you know, in a, I mean, there's a lot of scenes in, uh, you know, horror films where there's eye trauma. Uh, but, you know, it's always, you know, something that's fairly quick. It only happens, you know, you only get to see it for a few seconds. And while it may, you know, it may be gnarly and nasty, I mean, you don't get to see it for very long. Uh, that's, you know, probably because of ratings and things like that. But, you know, <clears throat> why let that get in the way? But here, I mean, obviously it's, uh, it's presented um, more fully. Uh, you get a better look at it, but, um, but yeah, so, you know, <clears throat> it, it just occurred to me while I was watching this one, now that I've seen a few dozen of, you know, these films, because I never really watched anything, you know, extreme, extreme before, before I started uh, this channel in this series, um, but I was just kind of thinking, you know, if you were going to, you know, somebody was kind of wondering, you know, hey, can I watch one of these kind of films? Is it going to be too much for me? Uh, this one would probably be a good one uh, to start out with, because if you can make it through this one, I think you can go to, you know, the next level. Because believe me, there's a lot more uh, worse films out there than this one. Um, so yeah, you know, if you're just curious, you've never seen, you know, an extreme horror film before, uh, yeah, you might want to give this one a shot. Like I said, if you Google it, you should be able to find it uh, where you can actually stream it and not have to buy it. Uh, which I, I think you can buy these on DVD. Um, I haven't looked recently, but I think somebody told me once, uh, yeah, that you can order them from somewhere. Uh, but anyway, yeah, if you don't want to spend money on a film that you're probably not going to like or probably never watch again, you may want to just search it out on the internet and see if you can find it. But, uh, but anyway, um, since I'm doing ratings different, uh, I was uh, giving these pass fails. Uh, but I think I'm going to give these real ratings too, just like I'm doing with my standard reviews. So, um... But I'm going to do the scale a little different. I'm not, I'm not going to be comparing them to regular horror films. It's going to be like a scale of 0 to 10 for extreme films. Uh, but it will be the same standard where 5 is an even, you know, kind of an average extreme film. And I'm going to put this one down at about a 4.5 because uh, it is below average. I think at least of, of the extreme films that I've seen, this one is definitely toned down a little bit, and some of it's probably because, you know, it, it did come out in 1985, which is quite some time ago, and things have uh, progressed in this subgenre uh, over the years, so, uh, yeah, I do think this one falls a little bit below average. Um, <clears throat> at some points of the film, it is kind of boring, um, where, you know, they uh, some of these segments uh, could have been either done better or they could have been shorter. We didn't need to dwell on them as long as uh, we did. And, you know, so with 10 segments in roughly 40 minutes, you know, they're all, give or take, about four minutes long. Uh, one of the scenes is just them spinning her around in, like, an office chair. <laughs> it's called unconscious or something like that. And they make her uh, drink uh, this bottle of liquor, which uh, most of it just runs out of her mouth down uh, the front of her uh, clothes. Uh, she doesn't actually drink it, so I'm not really sure how much she actually uh, swallowed. Uh, but yeah, they basically just spin her around until she gets so dizzy that she pukes. Again, I don't know, you know, obviously I wouldn't want somebody to do that to me, but I don't know it qualifies as like, you know, real torture. Uh, but yeah, just overall, I think this one does kind of just fall a little bit below the even mark uh, in this subgenre. So there you go. That's my review of the very first uh, Japanese guinea pig film. Uh, again, it's called Devil's Experiment. Uh, if you like this video, please definitely give it a like. Uh, that helps out the, the video with YouTube and all that good stuff. And if you still haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. That way you can see all the other reviews I've uploaded. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, we'll see you.